All right, how's it going guys? And welcome to our live video this Friday. Hopefully it doesn't look like this is streaming on a fax machine. We got our boy Levi in the comments. He's also just right there. So Levi, are we, how's, how's the stream looking? Looking all right? Uh, it's still updating on this one. Still updating on that, okay. Guys, I'm just gonna roll then. And if the stream's not good, we'll just have to do a reset and uh, see how it goes. <laughs> Hope everybody's Friday is going wonderfully. And uh, today we are doing a little bit of a different knife banner. So we got on social media yesterday and we got on YouTube community here on YouTube. And we told you guys, hey, this is how our warehouse system works. Send us random warehouse locations and we're just gonna pull randomly from those and we're just gonna pull whatever knives happen to come out of them. That's what I have on the table. So I have a bunch of knives right now on the table that fall in that category of just random knives pulled from warehouse locations that you guys fed us. We didn't know it was on the shelf. You didn't know it was on the shelf. Um, and then if you, ha if you have seen those posts in the live chat here, if you want to put a warehouse location, like a shelf location, Emmeline is going to be running around pulling some knives live. So if you want to get a knife pulled live or a location pulled live, then put your location in the live chat and Emmeline will pull them from there. So anyways, guys. I'm excited. There's some fun stuff on the table that we don't get to see very often. Kind of weirdly, there's actually stuff on the table that we do see often. No bug outs, but uh, let's jump into the first one. So first one on the table is from Philip Flanagan on Facebook. This one makes me really happy. So it looks just like a, uh, like a normal tinker, like, right? Just a normal yellow tinker, except for it's not. <laughs> it's a don't tread on me, uh, Victorinox tinker. So I'm going to go ahead and say because um, Philip had no idea what we were pulling or when we were pulling it. Let's see if we can get that in focus here. Maybe, maybe, a little bit, a little bit. All right. Um, because he had no idea what we were pulling here, this is just how American Philip is, that he just pulled one of the most American uh, Victorinoxes that you could. <laughs> so this is a pretty cool one um, off the shelf. And uh, the Super Tinker is a really neat Victorinox. Now, you guys know... I have a love affair with the Victorinox Compact. I really love it. Blade HQ in general, we love our SD Classics. We love our Super Tinkers as well. We have Super Tinkers in special patterns. Um, and with the Tinker, I have to check. I'm pretty sure it's, yeah, 12 tools. It comes with 12 tools, um, all pretty normal tools that you would expect with a Victorinox. And you guys have seen the Compact so many times. The one thing that is uh, better than the Compact on the Super Tinker is that Phillips head screwdriver right there. So this Phillips head screwdriver is the thing that makes the Super Tinker a really stellar uh, pocket tool on top of the other tools, obviously. But this is what distinguishes it from the compact. So uh, Super Tinker in the Don't Tread On Me pattern goes for $23.99 on the website. So you really can't go wrong. And Philip, like I said, I mean, you must wake up to the mor in the morning to the sounds of, you know, s screeching eagles and the American anthem uh, to, <laughs> to have just picked that one randomly off the shelf. <laughs> All right, next up is also a suggestion from Facebook. This comes from Jeffrey Corbinell, um, and the random location that he gave us actually pulled up a Leatherman rebar. Now, the Leatherman rebar doesn't get much attention on the channel. Um, it's uh, kind of an older Leatherman tool. It's a good Leatherman tool. I don't think Leatherman makes a bad tool, to be honest. Um, with the Leatherman rebar, though, you get 17 tools. This particular one has a nice dark coating to it. Um, obviously you get your needle nose pliers. This one does have the removable cutters here. So you can, uh, have the replaceable cutters and then it's got an assortment of tools inside of the scales. The nice thing about the Leatherman is that those tools do lock in place. So, um, you can pull it. It's funny, actually, that, that was a screwdriver. Um, you can pull it out. It will lock in place and then it releases from this latch on the back right here. Squeeze that down and that's your release. Um, so yeah, great tool from Leatherman. This one goes for $69.95. Um, so things that you don't get, as you saw with that Phillips head screwdriver, is you don't get the um, replaceable um, bit holder that you do get with some of the higher priced Leathermans, but the rebar does have just a ton of really great tools built in. Um, obviously you got your knife blade and uh, it's a Leatherman, so you really can't go wrong. Um, made in the USA, incredible warranty amazing you know bootstrap story from tim leatherman and his um getting the the first leatherman multi-tool made and uh just really really handy so the other nice thing with the rebar is that it is a little bit of a smaller uh multi-tool so it comes in probably right about where the wave comes in in size 
and right about where the wave comes in in weight as well. So great Leatherman multi-tool. And now I will say, so we did pull these randomly. Um, literally, Emmeline just got done handing me some of these knives. So this is my first time handling some of these knives. And this is my first time really looking at what's on the table because we wanted to come in as just raw and live as we could. So here we are. <laughs> All right, so next up, um, Al, the Salad Science Pal. That's cool. Um, I think that this location was because of his birthday. So we like put in his birthday and like his first initial or something like that. Is that how we picked the location? And we actually saw that a lot with people. They're like, oh, okay, like here's the ages of my kids and here's my wife's first initial. And that's how they chose their item location, which is kind of fun. So Al, the science pal, the uh, the knife that you chose with your random location was the uh, Benchmade Sock P Rescue Tool. Now I have never handled this this not even knife this is actually just a rescue tool literally exactly what it says so it comes with obviously a seat belt cutter right here comes with a glass breaker it's in that classic sock p fashion with your ring on this side you've got the uh the jimping or the texturing along the back side here that can be used for hammering or whatever you want to use for it obviously this isn't a hammer so <laughs> uh you don't want to hammer hammer it to death now, the interesting thing, though, is that I've, because I've never handled this, I'm assuming there's oxygen wrench and some other type of wrench here. Let me see if I can find out exactly what these other two tools are. Um, let's see. Yep. We got an O2 wrench. And I can't see what the other thing is for. So there is an O2 wrench on it and a glass breaker seatbelt cutter. So really nice, compact, just like the sock P comes in this really nice sheath. Nice deep carry pocket clip on that. Really easy to tuck into like a vest or um, a bag or whatever it may be. Or honestly, it's a rescue tool. This is the type of thing that you could easily throw in your glove box, right? It's not going to take a ton of real estate and uh, you'll have if you need it. So uh, rescue, this is the, the Benchmade Sock P rescue tool. And this go, comes in at 85 bucks. So kind of a cool little knife. Benchmade also sells trainers for the Sock P. Um, so it's kind of cool that the sock P can come in a live blade, it can come in a trainer blade, and it can come in this uh, rescue tool. Uh, like I said, first time I've ever that one. That actually might be the first time I've seen that one, um, which is kind of the fun thing about giving you guys the power just to pick random locations on the on the on the uh, shelves out there because there's stuff on the table that we just don't really talk about. Uh, so next up we have Jeremy Larson, also from Facebook, and his location came up with the Steel Will Plague Doctor. Now, this is a knife that I've handled before. Um, and here's the thing. I'm going to go ahead and wipe that off real quick. The, the beauty of doing it live, guys, is when you open the knife, you realize that uh, the lights don't like it too much. See? It's a little better. All right. So um, here's the thing with Steel Will. Steel Will, I feel like they don't get enough attention generally. Uh, Steel Will really does make a cool, cool knife. Now, I've never carried the Plague Doctor, so I can't speak specifically on this one. Um, this is a D2 blade in, in a drop point style believe these are yep, G10 handles, checking the sheet to make sure. Um, and, you know, great knife, 67.99, D2 blade, G10 scales, and it's a big knife, liner lock, really nice action, um, really nice lock up. And then uh, this, it has just a single tip up pocket clip. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a handful of knives from Steel Wheel. I actually own two of them. And if you tuned into our Facebook Live yesterday, as you guys know, uh, I'm the only person doing video right now at Blade HQ. So I'm sorry you guys have seen my mug so much this week as we <laughs> reach out and, and have content and show you guys different knives. Um, but yesterday on the Facebook Live, I was having a hard time remembering my knife names that I have at home. This morning is going to be the same exact thing. I cannot for the life of me remember uh, what the knife is that I have for, or two knives that I have from them. Um, but I can say, and I can say this with confidence, that I am always impressed with steel will. And every time that I pull a steel will knife, um, I'm always like, oh, yeah, these guys make a good knife. So if this is a brand you haven't checked out. Definitely make sure to check them out. Jeremy Larson, good random location on that one, buddy. <laughs> um, now, if you guys are tuning in live, you guys know I'll usually do some pocket checks. I'll usually do... Uh, some shout outs. What we'll probably do is when we get about halfway through this thing, um, we'll, I'll probably take a break and look at the screen. You guys are right here. I can see you right here. Um, but I don't have somebody feeding me that stuff like normal because uh, we're streaming from my phone, not from the fax machine that we did on Wednesday. I promise. I hope, I'm hoping this is looking better. Levi assures me this is looking better. 
<laughs> we appreciate you guys just showing up and being here while we're uh, working through it without our video team. All right. Um, next up, we have an MKM knife. Uh, this is a Vox in his design. This is the Tamavo. So you guys have seen the Tamavo before. Um, we've had Igor from MKM from Italy come by the shop and uh, do a knife banner with us. We've shown these things from SHOT Show, all of that. Tamavo's a really nice design. Again, nice, simple Vox Nez design. You can really see that in the blade pattern for sure. Goes for about 214 bucks on the website. Uh, you're gonna get an M390 blade, full titanium construction. Just kind of some neat design elements. You get the pop of blue that you always get with the, with the MKM knives. So you get that blue there on the pocket clip and on the, um, see if I can get that. Is that better? Uh, so you get closer. <laughs> Can't get it to focus. All right, all right. All right. I'm getting. I'm getting the. Uh, it looks good from Levi. So you can get that, uh, and, and you get the blue pivot color there on the uh, with a lot of it with all the MKMs actually. Um, so yeah, nice. Uh, probably a small to mid sized design from Jesper. Uh, you you can never go wrong with Jesper Voxnes. That's my personal opinion. Uh, but <laughs> if uh, if you think you can prove me wrong, reach out, and I'd love to have that conversation. Not only is Jesper a good dude, but he makes a good knife as well. Um, so yeah, so that's the Tamavo from MKM, goes for 214 bucks, and that's from John Queenons, Queenons, don't want to say your last name, buddy, I'm really sorry. <laughs> uh, just so you know, everybody's asking about your bracelet there. Oh, everybody's asking about my bracelet, oh, okay. Um, so yeah, I've got this copper bracelet, I recently uh, went on a trip <laughs> to, it's <laughs> a weird thing to talk about about knife banner let's just real quick um since it's coming up a bunch um uh i went on a trip up to oregon uh, i was blown through oregon as you guys know there's some uh there's a lot of wildfowls up there when i left there was a small fire in bend by the time i got to oregon there was a lot of fires and so i was trying to get out of oregon i won't go into the full story but basically uh xyz i was in oregon i ended up with this cool copper bracelet it's got a neat story I'll probably you'll probably see it all the time i'll probably wear it for a long time um, so anyways, that's the story on that. <laughs> um, next up from Quasi Flow on Instagram, cool name, um, we've got the Kershaw Antic is the, is the random one uh, that he chose from the location deck. And uh, this is the thing, guys, is these, it's funny to see what knives pop up even when we're randomly pulling them. Make sure to put your random suggestions in the live chat so that Emmeline can run around and grab some knives live while we're doing this thing, make sure to put shelf locations in um, because she's for sure looking for them to be able to pull them. But everything I have on the table is a knife. We didn't end up with like a lanyard bead or anything like that. We are Blade HQ, so it makes sense out of those 12,000 SKUs that randomly choosing a shelf number would have put you in a location with a pocket knife. Um, but anyways, Quasi Flow on Instagram, his random location landed us on the, um, this is the Kershaw Antic, very similar to the Shuffle in a lot of ways. Um, this one has uh, not a deep carry pocket clip, but kind of a deeper carry pocket clip. You've got the ring on the back, nice short utility blade on that. The blade length on this thing is 1.75 inches, so sub two inch blade, nice and compact. Um, I don't think I would lock my finger into that ring. I don't, I've never carried a knife with a ring, so it definitely does not feel normal to me. Um, but even just having that ring on there to give you more purchase, is actually really, really nice. So it does give you uh, a lot of purchase on that knife. And uh, yeah, great little knife from Kershaw. It goes for $25.95 on the website. And it is a stainless steel frame lock. So as you guys can see here, trying to get it uh, semi in focus for you guys. But as you guys can see here, you got that nice uh, frame lock with the uh, stainless steel frame there. So um, whether it's this, whether it's the shuffle, whether it's the Pilar, whatever it is, there are a handful of really nice utility knives in that price range. Um, and the Antic is definitely one of them. Let me know if you guys like, uh, also this ring works as a bottle opener, which is kind of cool. And then you have the pry bar on the end. I almost forgot to explain the ring, but uh, I'm interested. Let me know if you guys carry knives that have rings on them. Normally, you see them on Krambits. That's probably the most traditional place that I've seen them. Um, you have it on the Antic. And then ironically, we had a sock pee on the table as well. So we ended up with two knives that had uh, finger rings on the table, which is kind of interesting. Um, but yeah, let me know if you guys carry an EDC with a ring. And let me know how to utilize that. Like, what, why? Like, in a self-defense situation, I definitely understand the application there. Um, I've seen people kind of, like, flip Krambits on the rings, you know, kind of, kind of like a bally a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's kind of an interesting, uh, interesting thing, especially for something like the Antic. 
Um, all right, so CC likes knives uh, from Instagram uh, ended up with a Hogue X1 micro flip uh, in a really cool kind of blacked out pattern. That nice uh, Hogue Warncliffe style blade. This is Eliza uh, Eliza <laughs> Elijah Alishowitz design. Uh, two way reversible pocket clip on this, and uh, just really really great action. All made in the USA. Incredible warranties. Um, and this has this is a button lock. And it does come with a lock uh, here as well. It's a manual knife, but if you wanted to be able to lock your manual knife, you could. So um, I guess I'll show two camera. So you can see there, nice strong button lock. And then if you want, you can lock that there. No, can't do it with my pointer finger. Yeah, just like that. Um, so yeah, great knife from Hogue. You guys know that the micro flip, the micro switch, those are really, really great knives. And uh, yeah, this is no exception. It goes for 135.96 on the website, full titanium chassis. And it comes with this particular one, comes with a CPM 154 blade. Uh, there are, they have um, upgraded the blades to more premium steel on the newer ones. So that's an older model. Okay, uh, Raven the Pirate from Instagram. Hey buddy, glad you made a comment. Uh, Raven the Pirate, his location pulled up an awesome cold steel. So this is the SR1 light. So this is the light both because um, the handle is a lightweight version of the normal handles that you would get with the SR1 light, and then also light in price. So off the top of my head, I don't know what the SR1 usually goes for, the folder usually goes for, um, but this one goes for $59.49. This is a lot of knife for 60 bucks. And I've said it before, dollar for dollar, you're not gonna get as much knife, I think with any other knife brand that I can think of off the top of my head, then you're going to get with cold steel, which is really cool. So you have that Demco triad lock. Um, you've got that overbuilt cold steel sensibility, and then just that big thwack, right? That you get when, uh, when you buy cold steel. So I've been finding myself carrying a lot of cold steels lately. Now, I don't know why that is. Um, I have a handful. I enjoy them. Um, but there's something about just the security of that triad lock that's man, it's just sucked me in recently. So, um, Cold Steel SR1, light, great knife, ton of knife for the price. And uh, I mean, you get a 9.3 inch overall length and you get a four inch blade. So definitely a nice big knife. Um, all right, cool. Emmeline just brought in an awesome uh, suggestion that somebody had, well, an awesome location that somebody had, but it ended up being kind of a really cool, unique knife. Uh, but before we go any farther, um, if you guys uh, want to put out your pocket checks here, I'll give you guys uh, pocket checks, uh, shout outs here. It looks like Slicey Dicey is in the comments. If you guys haven't checked out Slicey Dicey's YouTube channel, make sure to check it out. Uh, he's a good dude uh, doing knife reviews out there. And um, looks like we've got, uh, oh, we got a bunch of locations going off, which is awesome. Uh, I don't know if uh, Kawe wants us to pull this or if this is what he's carrying. But he says he's got a uh, gold, or he's saying gold class mini Crooked River and Benchmade Anthem. If that's what he's carrying, that's amazing. <laughs> that's really amazing. Um, let's see. Just scrolling through real fast. It's actually really hard to read these comments while we're live, guys. <laughs> Um, for the sake of the video, <laughs> it looks like I'm just going to be able to do one or two of these things and call it good. Um, Max Tinkander says he's got a Spartan Harsey folder with gilded skulls. That's awesome. Those uh, Spartan Harseys are really rad. Uh, Rai, Rai G says, in my pocket, I have a Civiti Elementum in Damascus with carbon fiber. That's amazing. Looks like Zach Stuff's also in the comments. Guys, we got like a whole YouTube uh, YouTube reviewer party going on in the comments right now. So also Zach stuff. I've said it before. Great channel. Make sure to check out his stuff. Um, not just because of his name. <laughs> uh, Gary Paul says he's got a Benchmade Griptilian. Um, Killer MD7 says he has an Artisan Cutlery Shark D2. And uh, Celeb Thornburg says he has a Pair 3 and a Black Victorinox Executive in his pocket. Great carries, man. Those are really good. Uh, so I see a bunch of... Uh, like lo locations and everything going off here too. For me, I have been carrying the uh, bailout recently. So the Benchmade bailout. I uh, recently made a post on my Instagram page talking about the bent, the bug out. And a lot of you guys uh, reached out and said, dude, you need to get a bailout. So I got a bailout, put it in my pocket, and here we are. Um, really enjoying the bailout. I knew I would. I mean, it's a great knife overall. I just haven't pulled the trigger on it. So um, it'll be in the pocket for a while, and I'll return report 
let you guys kind of know how I landed on it. But I, uh, it's a pretty easy win for me on the bailout. M4 blade, aluminum handles with that really cool kind of like chalky texture to it. So it's gripped really well. Um, yeah. And uh, just a little more overbuilt, right? All right. Uh, jumping back into the knives on the table. Caleb Burgett from Facebook. Uh, his location landed us on a little UTX. Uh, what Kurt, Kurt would say, a cute little guy. Uh, a cute little guy, UTX 70. So this is, uh, this particular one comes in an LMAX steel. Now we've said it before with Microtech guys. I'm going to try to, here we go. We've said it before with Microtech that um, the blade steel that you see on the website, their website, our website, any website, may or may not be uh, the actual blade steel that the knife is made of. So Microtech goes between a handful of very premium blade steels that are all right in the same range as as uh, as each other, right? So M390s, LMAXs, um, they're using uh, a carpenter steel right now. I can't remember which, des which designation, um, but overall, great knife. This one is a combo blade, combo, da combo dagger blade, and um, goes for 240.75 on the website. And these, these little guys, man, I don't know. I don't think that I would carry a UTX 70 personally, but I know a lot of you guys out there do, and I know a lot of you guys out there really like them. So UTX 70, great knife from Microtech, and that's from Caleb Burgett uh, and his random location. Now, we had a request from a lot of you that you wanted to see what was the first knife in the warehouse and what was the last knife in the warehouse. And so... Um, we pulled the first knife in the warehouse and we pulled the last knife in the warehouse. Um, the first knife in the warehouse is the Spyderco Bow River. Oof, it's got a shiny blade. We're going to see what we can do with the old Sofilm we'll do. It's not going to... Uh, there we go. Try that. We're going to try that out. So the Spyderco Bow River, great fixed blade knife. Overall length of 8 inches. Blade length of 4.4 inches. Um, goes for $37, guys. This is a Spyderco fixed blade you can get for $37, which is amazing. I, you know, 37.80 technically, so 38 dollars. Let's call it. Um, really great knife, very popular. I know a lot of you guys have been buying this thing up, um, and it does. This is a G10 handle that you get here with the Bow River, and then it comes with. I mean, at 38 dollars, it still comes with a really nice black leather sheet. So really cool knife from Spider Co. Um, and that is the first knife in the warehouse. Now the last knife in the warehouse. And I actually checked on this because it was kind of interesting that this was the last knife in the warehouse as well, um, is also a fixed blade. So the last knife in the warehouse is the SOG Pillar. This is a uh, limited edition in canvas micarta with kind of a, kind of a desert warrior pattern to it. And uh, this thing has an S35 VN blade, overall length of uh, nine inches and a, or almost 10 inches actually, and a blade length of five inches. So. Really cool knife from, sorry, not SOG, S-O-G. I messed that up in the last stream. Somebody called me out on it, which is good. They want to be called S-O-G, and I should call them S-O-G. Um, I just have called them SOG for so many years. So if I mess up, I apologize to everybody, including S-O-G. Um, but yeah, so this this S-O-G pillar, not pillar, pillar, um, goes for $239.95 on the website. Um, nice my, canvas micarta grip. Uh, this particular one is made in the USA. Nice jumping across the back of the spine. Just a cool knife all the way around. Great design from SOG. And then also uh, comes with a nice sheath. Now, I don't have the box. I'm sure it comes with different accoutrements to attach it to your uh, your belt. Or uh, that would be actually awesome if it came with a chain. Could you imagine neck knifing this thing? That'd be crazy. <laughs> but uh, I'm sure it comes with stuff to attach to a backpack or a belt or whatever it might be. Uh, so that is the last knife in the warehouse. Um, and the reason that I say it's funny is, you guys know, we talk about folders a lot. Uh, we sell a lot of folders. We sell a lot of fixed blades too, but we sell a lot of folders. And it's kind of funny that the first knife in the warehouse and the last knife in the warehouse were both fixed blades. I'm kind of into that. All right. Um, next up, we have from BJ Farah. Uh, BJ Farah ended up pulling a frost cutlery. This is called the Hen and Rooster Stockman, which is kind of cool. This has a really cool rooster. My my camera is really having a hard time focusing here. Let's see. I'm going to see if I can like make it focus. Let's see. Boom. Hey. Oh, uh, and then it decided not to. Okay. You can see it there. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> you know, on the last live stream, because uh, the, the latency was really bad. And it actually wasn't the phone's fault. That was the internet's fault. We fixed that problem this round. Uh, but on the last live stream, there were a lot of comments that were like, well, I guess Jamie's job's not at risk. And you are 100% correct. When we called Jamie the 
the video deity, the video God. It's not a joke. Jamie really knows what he does. He is a professional. Um, <laughs> so this is the Frost Cutlery uh, Hen and Rooster Stockman. It's got a, uh, a both a hen and a rooster on that uh, emblem right there, which is really neat. goes for 50 bucks on the website. And it's got a handful of blades on the inside. It's a, just a traditional uh, slip joint jackknife. And I'll show you guys the blades here. Boom. So just kind of a couple good traditional blades. You can see I got those fingerprints on there because high polished blade, which is kind of nice. Um, yeah. And I really like the uh, the green that they've got on this. I like the brass liners. I think those are really cool. And frost cutlery, man. <laughs> I don't know. Um, besides besides the that my one big knife that I have from my knife collection from when I was a kid, I, that might be the first frost cutlery to ever appear on Knife Banner. <laughs> but 50 bucks on the website for that. And uh, let's see. Because I've never handled a frost cutlery um, uh, slip joint. I mean, it's got a nice feel to it. It doesn't have like a half stop. I like a good half stop in my um, slip joints. That's a preference thing that doesn't make or break a uh, slip joint. I personally like a good half stop, but it does seem to come to the back end and lock up really nicely with that spring. Not a ton of pressure to have to close it up. Seems like a fairly nice slip joint. I'm no con sewer of slip joints. That seems pretty nice. All right, uh, Knife Daddy, I'm into that name. Uh, Knife Daddy uh, uh, ended up pulling from YouTube, ended up pulling a Protec Dawn. So this is a Protec Knives Dawn. This is an automatic knife from Protec uh, made right here in the USA. This particular one has a 154 CM blade, um, full aluminum chassis, and then that sweet, sweet Protec snap. And it's not an operator series Protec, but it is all blacked out, which is really cool. So you get the blacked out deep carry pocket clip. Um, you still get the the name ProTech and the Don on the back, but overall, really, really cool knife. You know, kind of a classic, uh, like a, a, a classic Italian inspired automatic knife from ProTech. I really like the Dons. I really like the Godsons. I really like the Godfathers. Uh, I think they're all really great knives. Um, so two forty four ninety five for that Don and. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to see if we can get in here and get this thing to focus for you guys. Let's see, boom! Can you see the texturing, kind of the fingerprint texturing that you get on the blade there, or uh, sorry, on the handle? It's really, really subtle. You don't feel it a ton in your time, your hand, but it does add just a little extra security to that aluminum frame um, while you're holding it. So, kind of a kind of a neat addition from Protec. You don't see that on a lot of Protec knives. I wonder if that's something that's exclusive to the Don. Um, Protect on. Great knife from Knife Daddy on YouTube. All right. And then um, Emline has a couple of knives that she's pulled here on the table. So um, I am bumping up towards the end of your guys' suggestions. So like I said, if you guys want to see a knife live, make sure to throw in live comments here and we will pull it live and see what it ended up being. Actually, two of them are not knives. So you guys did a really good job at finding not knives on accident. <laughs> but the, uh, the last knife that we pulled from... Uh, all the social feedback that we got from you guys is from Tim Hastings on Facebook. Um, and this is the Buck Pursuit Pro. So this is just like a dyed in the wool hunting knife, like straight up, you got your gut hook, you've got a, a fairly nice little belly here. Um, obviously it's a locked back construction and it's hunter orange. It's got a kind of a rubberized grip to it. I wonder what exactly, it's an FRN. It's an FRN handle, but it, it feels rubberized. It feels a little bit softer than a normal FRN. It's got a little more grip to it, um, but it is nice and lightweight, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, dyed in the wool hunting knife here, the Buck Pursuit Pro, and uh, this goes for $119.99 on the website. It's got an S35VN blade, 9.5 overall length, and a blade length of 4.5 inches. So um, if you're into hunting, it is it is the season. Uh, buck is a good way to go. Um, growing up, I think every man in my family that I know hunt, that hunted, hunted with a buck knife. Uh, well processed with a buck knife um if you're out hunting deer with just a buck knife please send me a video i definitely want to see that <laughs> all right uh now from you guys live we have uh, a couple really random looking suggestions over here which i'm really stoked on uh it's kind of funny when we pulled these first batch from social media we were like man like a lot of these are knives that we don't see on knife banner but also they're all knives and they're all knives that feel like they could easily work their way onto a knife banner without any consideration. So what we have here is a knife that I don't know if it's ever, maybe it made it on the knife banner we did with Lynn Thompson back when we were back, uh, 
when we were allowed to see all of our friends in the world. <laughs> and we were in Ventura at his, uh, at his place. But this is from Sean Fitzpatrick, who's watching live. Thanks for tuning in, buddy. Um, and this is the Cold, Stu Cold Steel Spontoon Hawk. This thing is straight. Like, this is like out of the movie The Patriot. That's what this thing is out of. Um, this is, or Last of the Mohicans or something like that, right? Um, this is just a full-on spontoon. Uh, I mean, you could probably, I would imagine you could throw it. I've never thrown one. I don't know what the balance is like. Um, they go for 46 bucks on the website. If I remember correctly from talking to Lynn, yeah, they don't come sharpened at all. So neither edge is sharpened. And I think that's because they're supposed to be kind of like a recreation thing, something you can't hang on the wall. But we all know Lynn. We all know Cold Steel. I'm sure that this thing is meant to be put to work um, if it's something that you want to throw or something you want to practice with or whatever it is that you want to do with it. So Cold Steel Spontoon Hawk. And the other cool thing, 4674 for this thing, which is pretty dang neat. Um, and you know, here's the thing. You could probably, you know, at a flea market or something like that, you could probably find something that looked like this, right? Um, but what you get with Cold Steel is, I mean, they back up their products. Cold Steel has an amazing warranty. So um, if that's something that you want, 46 bucks and you're going to get yourself a sweet spawn tune hawk. Uh, again, I don't, like I said, other than like recreation, hanging it on the wall, practicing, throwing, um, I guess that's what the application would be there. You're not splitting wood with it. That's for sure. <laughs> I guess you could, I guess with the back end, you could drive nails. Uh, that'd be interesting to see on the job site, right? <laughs> um, I actually, uh, my grandpa, he did some uh, drywall work back in the day, like back, like back in like the 60s and 70s. And they used to have tools that were actually similar to this, but it was more of a um, like hatchet head with a hammer on the back. And they would use that for driving the nails for the drywall, for cutting out the drywall, all that stuff. And uh, I always thought it was a cool looking tool. That's pontoon hawk looks similar. All right, these are kind of out of reach, so I'm just gonna have to reach over and get her going. Okay, uh, Lucas Traeger, who's watching live, heir to the uh, Traeger Grill um, fortune, as we all know. <laughs> he, the the, uh, the location that he gave was a lanyard. So see guys, we do have lanyards and beads and stuff like that. And here we are finally getting to a lanyard. I'm glad that uh, Lucas suggested this thing because I was kind of hoping to, to catch some of this, you know, offbeat stuff that does just doesn't get as much attention as, as other things do. So. Um, I'm going to try to get this thing to focus. Guys, when Jamie gets back, he's going to just like, he's going to be like, bro, are you serious? This is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. There. Uh, nope. It's not going to, it's just not going to do it. Here. Let me do it. <laughs> the odyssey of trying to figure this out. Here we go. A little bit. No, I can't get it to focus very well. Um, but basically what it is, is it's a beat on a uh, paracord line that's, uh, <laughs> that's braided out. And then it's got a bunch of, uh, I think you can see there, it's got a bunch of the Spider Co logo spiders all the way around it. So kind of just a neat lanyard, goes for 28 bucks. Um, I love Spider Co. Um, and I buy stickers, I buy patches, I buy all sorts of like weird little like tchotchke type things. Um, I'm not one to buy lanyards, I'm not one to buy beads generally. Um, I've been working on a bead idea recently, so maybe we'll see something with that in the future. But um, yeah, I mean, 28 bucks. I don't know if I would go 28 bucks on this. But I could definitely see myself spending 28 bucks on uh, like, a, like a hat or something like that that was from my favorite brand. So I can definitely see how somebody would want to carry that. Um, all right. I'm just going to have to step off for a second, guys, and slide some of the stuff this way. All right. I'm going to save. Uh, I don't know if it's the best. But I'm going to save the biggest for very last from what you guys suggested. All right. So um, DCJFMJ, um, his, his location pulled up the GE made New York special slip joint. Now, this is a knife that has been on Knife Banner once or twice. It doesn't get featured a ton, but this is actually a kind of a really neat knife. Now, if I remember correctly, JE made is really about finding these kind of old patterns these old traditional patterns and then kind of bringing them back. So the New York special is a uh, classic traditional slip joint pattern that they brought back for this specific knife. I'm trying to see if they, if we have that in the description, I can't remember where the inspiration came from this, but um, really neat knife from JE made. It goes for 170 bucks. It's full titanium construction S30 VN blade. It does have a titanium pocket clip on it, very much a modern traditional. And the walk and talk on this thing, like in the half stop. So it's got a nice, strong half stop, nice pull. 
nice strong uh, pull to open and nice strong push to close. And then it's got a pretty nice walk and talk. It's a little subdued. If you don't know what walk and talk is, it's basically um, how it moves and the sound that it makes. So this one's a little bit muted. I'm not a slip joint expert, I've said it already once, but I think this is a really neat slip joint knife in a very neat pattern. Um, if you're looking for something unique, if you're looking for a gentleman's knife, if you're looking for a modern traditional, definitely check out GE Made. If this one doesn't tickle your fancy, they do have a handful. So make sure to check out GE Made for uh, that type of stuff. All right. <laughs> I'm also excited about this one, like with, like with the lanyard. Um, so the next up is from Beefy Boy on YouTube Live. Man, just such a good username. Um, this is an advanced medical SOL heat sheet survival blanket. That's right, guys. On Blade HQ, we do sell survival stuff. So if you want to find uh, just random survival stuff, we do have some random survival stuff on the website. And this is just uh, a blanket, uh, like survival blanket. So let's see here. I'm just going to all just read you guys what this thing does. Uh, it's 90% heat reflective. I don't know what that exactly means. It's 25% larger than an emergency blanket. Um, and it's windproof and waterproof. That's actually pretty stellar. In my situation, um, when I've been in when I've been in situations where I need to bundle up because it's too cold for X, Y, or Z reason, can't start a fire, it's usually because wind or rain. So uh, kind of cool survival blanket. And it says it's a one to two person. So get two people in there, be as snug as uh, two bugs in a rug. And that goes for five ninety five on the website. So I'm telling you guys, you need an item for your bug out kit. We might have something on the website. Uh, we are Blade HQ. But we do, we do carry a little bit of gear here or there. So if you didn't know, now you know. <laughs> All right. And then finally, like I said, uh, probably not the best, but the biggest for sure. Uh, I saved for last. This is, the, uh, this is from Hulk Hogan 93. Yes, I'm about that name. Um, and this is the Ontario OKC 18-inch, not too big for camera, 18-inch uh, field black D-handle machete. So basically, it's an 18-inch machete from uh, uh, Ontario OKC brand. And this thing is uh, 1095 steel. It's got a pretty thick stock to it. I mean, you can see here, like it's no slouch, that's for sure. Um, nice guard on the handle here. I'm assuming, I will definitely, this is some sort of polymer, and it's actually just called a polymer. So this is just a polymer handle. Um, yeah, but this is a big, big boy. Um, somebody was asking me the other day about the... Uh, se youngless and then uh, and i and i told him i was like dude it's a it's it's a rad knife i mean it's a machete verging on the edge of a sword um because of how thick the stock is and just how much it how good it's able to be used and somebody else had commented and they had said um that it, it transcended a knife and it verged on just being a tool just like a like a, a general use tool this this okc kind of falls in that same range like Definitely very, very heavy duty. Um, I don't know off the top of my head if this is uh, full tang or not. It looks like it is full tang. Um, it also looks like you would want to make sure to be careful with this. It's nice that it has the hand guard, but being a polymer, you wouldn't want to beat it up too much. But again, at $26.95, honestly, not a bad little knife. So good job, Hulk Hogan 93, with your random suggestion of what we should pull. Uh, that ended up being kind of a cool one. <laughs> All right. That's all I've got on the table, guys. Uh, so there are a bunch of random knives uh, that we have in the warehouse at Blade HQ. Uh, some of them you've seen every once in a while, but I think we had a lot of stuff on the table that usually isn't seen in Knife Banner. Thank you so much for all of your suggestions that made this possible. Uh, and thank you for bearing with us while all the video team is out this week. Uh, I, hopefully this video uh, looks a little bit better and was a little bit smoother for you guys watching at home. And um, I think that's all we've got. So... Thanks so much, guys. We appreciate uh, your guys' support. And then uh, let me know down below. I'll get in the comments today because nobody else is here to do it. So I'll be in the comments personally today. And let me know what your favorite one was on the table. I think for me, my favorite one on the table, I think I really like this SOG. I can't remember the price. I know the price was a little high on this one. Maybe it was a little too high, right? Um, I can't remember exactly what the price was. But I, I like the design of it. I like the way it feels. I like the micarta. Um, it's a nice beefy knife. It's USA made. Um, so I, I think on the table, that's probably the knife that I was I was kind of drawn to the most. It's probably more a visual thing than anything. But uh, 
that SOG was pretty sweet. So let me know down below in the comments. I'll be down there all day long. And uh, you guys have yourself a wonderful Friday. We'll catch you on the next one.